was hoping to go and work overseas. And one day, I was approached. It starts with an attractive job offer abroad. And it ends in modern slavery. After getting my visa and booked my ticket, one of the things I do before I visit any country is to sit behind my computer and see what the internet says about the country. And that was the exact same thing I did for Cambodia. Unfortunately, it gave me a negative perspective about how Cambodia looks like. It only spoke about scam, scam rings, and how other nationalities, whether Ghanaians, Bangladeshi, Indian, Vietnamese, are all doing or being used to do in Cambodia. It was all about scam. 16-year-old Lin was working in a hot pot restaurant when a man she knew offered her a much higher paid typing job in Guangxi province on the border with Vietnam. But after accepting it, she and her friend found themselves being driven out of the country. Since the middle of 2021, hundreds of people have been rescued from cyber scam operations in Cambodia, including Chinese, Thais, Indonesians, Vietnamese, Malaysians and Burmese. In December 2022, over 500 Thailand nationals who were recruited to scam in Cambodia were successfully repatriated back home, according to the Bangkok Post. Several Indians have also been rescued successfully. I then decided to turn my three days visit into an investigative piece to uncover if there are Africans who are victims or who have been defrauded into this online scam in Cambodia. I titled this documentary, The Scam Rings of Cambodia. The Indian Embassy in Cambodia announced that it had rescued 60 nationals who were victims of fraudulent employment practices in the foreign nation. These individuals were recently transferred to the Cambodian city of Phnom Penh, today with assistance from the embassy for travel documents and other arrangements to facilitate their return to home. The 47 Malaysians, including 40 Sarawakians, were released from detention on February 15th following talks between the Malaysian and Cambodian governments. They had reportedly gone to Cambodia after receiving lucrative job offers which did not materialize but were arrested on December 11th on suspicion of being involved in illegal online gambling. The advertisers, who are mostly Chinese, strategically advertise on social media using all social media platforms, especially Facebook, to advertise for jobs. They advertise searching for people who are IT inclined and most of the terms that they put out in the advertisement include typing jobs, HR jobs, online marketing jobs. They quote huge sums of money and most of the times people from Asia, Africa and Europe are baited into thinking that they are signing up for a very good job. They end up becoming slaves to work for these companies. checked up on Facebook to see some of these advertisement and to my dismay people still advertise for these jobs boldly on Facebook
I gathered my luggage and headed to the airport. My mission was very simple to find out if there are blacks who can confirm to me this cam rings in Cambodia and better still share their experience with me if they have any testimony. Welcome to Cambodia! Cambodia! Getting a Cambodian visa may be very easy, but entering Cambodia is a Herculean task which is currently an albatross on the necks of all black people. Anything, but you pay in dollars. Yeah. What about the Cambodian money? Real. They, they don't collect it. No. You can pay any currency. Okay. But you lose the right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, I saw you. That's my hotel in Phnom Penh. Cambodia is one of the poorest members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. The poverty rate in Cambodia had declined to 16.6% in 2022 from 36.7% in 2014, according to the United Nations Development Program UNDP report on Thursday. The number of poor people was halved from 5.6 million to 2.8 million, the report said. One of five Cambodians moved out of poverty in just 7.5 years. Of the 25 subnational regions, 17 had significant reductions in Global Multidimensional Poverty Index (NPI) value and incidence of poverty, the report said. The poorest subnational regions reduced their global MPI value and incidence of poverty the fastest. Incidence of poverty fell from 64.3% to 34.6%. Cambodia has a population of about 17 million people. Agriculture remains the dominant economic sector, with growth in textiles, construction, garment, and tourism, leading to increased foreign investment and international trade. Cambodia is considered among the most vulnerable countries to climate change. Whilst in the country, I met people of different nationalities, most of which were tourists and the rest were workers. But telling me their work was a difficult thing to do. Hello, boss. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm also good. So I met you in Cambodia. Uh, what are you doing in Cambodia? My uh, friend, elder brother, Cambodia. Okay. But where are you from? Bangladesh. Bangladesh, yeah. okay. So how long have you been in Cambodia? Yeah. How long have you been here? Mm, one month. One month? Yeah. Okay. Others boldly told me that they were into online scam in Cambodia. My name is Hasibol. Okay, and uh, where are you from? I'm from in Bangladesh. Bangladesh, what are you doing in Cambodia? Uh, because I want to need a job. That's why I come here in Cambodia. Oh, you want to get a job? Yeah. They're looking for a job? Yeah. Uh, okay. What, 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 what kind of profession are you into? Uh, I, I was mobile operator in Bangladesh. Mobile operator? Yeah. Oh, okay. So have you started working in Cambodia? Have you started uh, work? Work, work, work. Have you started work? Yeah, yeah. Oh, work. okay. You are into online job, online? Yeah, yeah, online job. Oh, okay. Yes, no job. Oh, okay. So what do you do? What, what do you do? The online job, what do you do? Online scamming. Oh. Online scamming. Oh. Online scamming. You are online scamming. Yeah, yeah. Not ah. scamming. Not scamming, but uh, this company with a job in Cambodia. 
Data entry. Oh, so what, do you live in here or outside Cambodia? Uh, oh, are you in Hatien? No, no, no. Oh, okay, you are here. So, on what do you do online? What do you do online? Uh, do you sell things? Mail bed, one X bed, one X bed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. This oh. job. These are people who enjoy their job as online scammers in Cambodia. However, there are a whole lot of people who are being forced to also scam people. These guys are maltreated and turned into slaves because the slighted opportunity they get, they would like to run away from where they are being camped. I set out to look for some of these victims who went through these trial times and has been able to successfully run out or get out of it. Meet Fred, a bilingual and ESL teacher in Cambodia. He agreed oh. to take me to hey. some of the victims oh, in Cambodia. Tuk Tuk is the major source of transportation for the people of Cambodia. It goes everywhere and it is safe, fast and very reliable. On the street of Cambodia, you will see a whole lot of tuk-tuk and motorbikes navigating their ways through the harsh traffic conditions in Cambodia. Uh, my Nigerian brother. Boss, how are you now? Fine. And uh, what your name? What's your name? Yes, sir. Yeah. How long have you been in Cambodia? Nine years. Nine in years? Total, yeah. In Cambodia? Yeah. Did you come here as oh, you are smoking? No, yeah. Did you come here as a teacher or how did you come here? I don't teach. <laughs> so how did you how did you come you came to Cambodia to do what? For business now. For, for business. Okay. It's okay like this. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So currently I'm about getting in touch with some Ghanaians. <laughs> If I dream more, then I should be out. When I'm moving, I should be for that. I don't tell my man I'm here for. Come on, come on, she. I tell my man I'm here for. I'm not my, not my people paying to me. Fred takes me to meet some Ghanaians who once suffered in the scam rings of Cambodia, but are currently ESL teachers in Cambodia. Most people of color in Cambodia are ESL teachers or are businessmen. Meet Kane, an ESL teacher who is a victim of the scam rings of Cambodia. He agreed to speak to us on condition of anonymity. My agent from uh, Ghana mm -hmm. told us that we are coming to work. Okay. He didn't even tell us we are coming to Cambodia. He get it. So we were supposed to come for a teaching job. They, okay. they took our CVs and stuff for all the good things. But when we got to Vietnam, we realized that there was nothing there. So they eventually linked, the agent linked me to another person mm -hmm. to um, work with. Work with, yeah. So it was the guy who just said, okay, this is the way forward. He showed us where to go get our visa and all the. In fact, the guy from that point was very good. Because everything he told us would happen on the road and stuff was point on. So when we eventually got out of uh, uh, the Cambodia embassy, he, he, in fact, um, one of my people here said, OK, you can come search for a job and stuff on your own. But the promise from Ghana was that you get a job, you are getting around 20,000 Ghana. I, I took loans and stuff to come here. I have families in there. So I was like, OK, if there is a job that is secure, that you will be paid and stuff. Why would I go job hunting when everything is secure? So we opted for the job that they said is online marketing and stuff. That's what we opted for. And another factor was that I didn't have money on me. So how to cross the border? You know that when you are crossing the Vietnam, Cambodia border, they worry you with yeah. money and stuff. So to get somebody to help you cross the line will also be an issue. So the guy took it upon himself to get somebody to help us cross the border and stuff. So eventually we crossed and we came. We got there around 3 a.m. K 
Kane, after failing to secure a teaching job in Vietnam, was sold to Cambodia with the hope of going to do a typing and HR job. But he found himself in the scam ranks of Cambodia. You met uh, Chinese workers over the... They were the people you were going to work for? Yes. Okay. They told us that. They asked us, do we know, do you have any experience working on before? And we asked them, what job is it? They said, it's an online scam. Oh, they, they told, told you online straight. Scam. They told us straight up. There was no lie. It was there that we realized that whoa, we've gotten ourselves into hot waters. So after the introduction, they they checked our proficiency in typing and stuff, whether we can speak English and stuff. When they were cool, then they took us to our room. So when we got there, then I contacted my brother and said, "Bro, what's up?" So ah, these people said it's a scam. I, said, ah, I thought I was hearing wrong. So fortunately, there were two guys, Ghanaian guys, also working. And the time we got there was around 3.30 a.m. And it was the time they were about to close. So they asked us to wait till they closed and they would give us info on what is there. So we waited for a while, uh, about 30 minutes time they came. That was where they told us of the things going on there. It's an online scam. They create markets around like online markets, get people to invest and stuff. And when you invest, I, I, we didn't go to the train, so we don't, but they create an online market. So they create okay. like um, an American online market or investment market. Okay. Do you get it? That, that, those are big scams. Yes. Because it's a big place, bro. That place is huge. It creates like an American market and they have, there are people working as uh, investors, as customers, as people who have, so like, something big people would be uh, testifying of what you see so it creates the awareness and people get on board and probably when you invest they just block you and stuff but, so how were you guys able to get out so when we got there um we told them after getting to the room and asking a few questions from our Ghanaian uh, people over there we told them we didn't want to work again so we called the agent who, who and this Ghanaian brother who told us that he's a brother, he's a friend, he wouldn't take us eh, into something, eh, asked us to refund the money we would have paid to cross the border. And the money they took from us, the, the, the TNT they took us from Philippines to that place before they would allow us out. No, Meet Fifi, the man mentioned by the two brothers to have connected them to the scam rings of Cambodia. He was once an ESL teacher in Vietnam who went and visited around in Cambodia and never returned back, but rather chose to go that direction. He had severally convinced me to link to him teachers who couldn't find a job in Vietnam to come to Cambodia, but I refused. I chanced on a post made by Fifi advertising for workers in Cambodia for a typing job. Knowing very well that we had money issue, that was why we couldn't even cross before. So how much was the contract sum? Did you sign a contract? No, no, no. We didn't sign because if once you sign a contract, you are doing. Oh, so you were coming before you sign a contract. The guys over there told us that once we realize that we've not signed any contract, at least it makes it easier for us to leave. Once you sign a contract. How many people did you see in the camp? How many people? Uh, when we entered, I think we saw a group of about 40 people. 40 people? Who were who had close at that point, who were going to sleep. So they were the people we saw in, 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 the, in the group. But the place is huge that I can't really give the number out. So yeah. you, you, you guys work in shifts? No, I don't think it's a shift. They, they work from 3 p.m. to like 4 a.m. the next day. Oh, 3 p.m. in the afternoon? Yes. To 4 a.m.? Yeah. <laughs> you don't sleep? How is that possible? <laughs> because when you, after closing at 4, you come and sleep till about 2, 1, there about, you wake up, you wow. bath, then you go back to work. Wow. That was the, their routine over there. Wow. And uh, is, is, it, is it like creative? Like, do you make a lot of money? Do they make a lot of money? What we were told when we went there that, the first month you get seven hundred and fifty dollars. The second month you get eight hundred and fifty dollars. The third month nine hundred and fifty. After six months you get thousand one. Wow. 
but even with that you will be deducted 20 percent of the amount every month they from their explanation they are to keep it if you are able to cross one year they will gather everything and give to you fred corroborated to the account and gave instances where he was also sold his first time traveling abroad you, you go on you go on facebook and you type jobs in cambodia mm. that's what the job you see typing in cambodia hr work in cambodia online jobs online jobs in cambodia uh, like typing jobs customer service representatives hr that is human resources and typing that is about 30 percent typing it's a scamming job. If you come here to do such job, it's like you, are, you have been put into slavery. How? You will be in a company that they have fenced. You will not, even sometimes you will not be able to come out to see the sun. Wow. For about two years. So most of the, these scamming companies or these online jobs, they, 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 are, they are separated from main Cambodia. Uh, they, so they, they, they are based in a camp. Yeah, most uh, most majority of them are outside. That they are maybe uh, outskirt Cambodia town. Okay. Yeah. Like they are, they are within the country, but they are just outskirt of the, from town. the towns. Okay. Yeah. And where I'm staying now, uh, I have one scamming company that is just opposite me. And if I'm in my this in my room, I just see them. Wow. Yeah. They have branded everything. They have branded everything. So if you why uh, why uh, was I saying that it's a scary? Sometimes they can take your life. Wow. Yeah. If you're in some of the companies, they can kill you. And I understand you, you, you yourself. How did you come to uh, Thailand? Actually, it was 2022 that I got uh, a job offer by one of the one of these scamming companies. But that but then I didn't know, and it was through my Ghanaian friend. I didn't know him, but through this coming that I came to know him, who tried to connect with other people to also encourage me, oh, this company is good, you can get money. If you come here and you bring somebody to this company, they will, they will give you $1,500 for per each person that you bring. And in fact, I made so many inquiries and this guy tried to oh, encourage yes. me to come. Mm -hmm. So that time I was able to, okay, I was also happy to come to see what uh, job that, what sweet job is this one? Because mm -hmm. how they, they would charge you, how they will encourage you, how they will make you have the interest to come. So, yes. so let's talk about you. So you, what happens when the guy charge you and you agree to come? Yeah, and I agreed to come because uh, he was also a Ghanaian. Okay. He was also Ghanaian. So I know my country, my country yes, cannot exactly. receive me. Yes. But when I came here, the very first day... And you told me they, they, they paid for your, your, your tickets? Yeah, for my ticket. I told them that if I come, because I speak Chinese and they want a translator. Okay. A Chinese and, translator? Yeah. Okay. So I accepted that if you want me to come to be a translator for you, then you have to pay my cost. So for my visa fee and uh, my flight ticket, they paid it wow. for me to come here. So I just spent a letter. Uh, and mostly some of the con uh, companies can pay you uh, basically everything for you to come back the person who is chatting with you might take that money okay that's the that's the agent yeah for you to pay you by yourself to come here so sometimes if you uh, let let me talk about mine before mm -hmm. okay so when i came here the very first night i was happy because they will be giving you food and everything but the next two days uh, i was hearing rumors that this company is coming and i was i I put some people they told me this company is a scamming job and uh, you have to go through and all the companies if they employ you have to go through a uh, distant training. training two weeks training and when i hear this when you heard I, that uh, yeah and when i heard that mm -hmm. i saw i saw that mm, I, I might have a problem here because the very first time that i came i crossed the river when I, immediately i crossed the river there was a, a military man when you entered you were taken to cross a river yeah when i when i yeah they they took me to cross a certain river and immediately i crossed the river there was a military man there who took surrounded me, you? surrounded you they just used gun wow to just take you to the company and in fact i was very scared now they have sold me are they going to kill me or whatsoever 
prepared. So you realize you have been sold. I have been sold. Yes, perfectly. I was sold because the person who brought, who sent me there collected uh, thousand five hundred dollars. Wow. wow. And whatever happens to you again, the person doesn't, doesn't mind. Care. So meaning we still have Africans who are still selling their fellow Africans in Cambodia. My brother, it's going on, going on every daily, every day. It's going on. as I'm talking, and there's somebody who is coming. Wow. There's somebody who is talking to somebody to be scammed every day now it is going on especially my fellow west african country people. and that's the reason why then that's the reason why the cambodian embassy are very strict on blacks who come that, here yeah because they don't want you to come here to do that job okay and, mm -hmm. do you know what even the cambodians the citizens themselves they don't do it wow why don't they employ those citizens here could you imagine but you rather luring africans africans come and scam yes. cambodia Mm. Because Cambodian, the government here wouldn't allow you to do that. And if they see you just trying to cheat their distant, their citizens, you are dead. Wow. You are dead. So the Cambodians and the citizens of this Asian country, they themselves are not doing this job. Why do they go outside to bring others? You okay. So a black person sold you to a company to come and work. Yes. So when you they paid for your visa and your ticket and everything. Sure. And how much did they say they were going to pay you? They told me they are going to pay me thousand dollars a month. But when I got here and signed the contract, they said six hundred dollars. Wow. So sure. but you should have confronted them and you told me thousand dollars. Why am I signing? My brother. Somebody? What are you going to do? Oh, so at that time, you had been captured yeah. with soldiers. Yes, you have nowhere to go. And the, and the place, they are fed on soldiers, and uh, soldiers are this around. So, where you came, you were taken to cross a river. A river. After the river, you were surrounded by soldiers. Yes. And you were taken to the camp. The camp. Yeah. So, which people live in the camp? Is it only those people living in that camp? Many, uh, from many different countries. Uh, especially, let me tell you, this uh, Chinese these companies are mainly owned by chinese people now to china where 130 chinese nationals suspected of crimes related to gambling and fraud were repatriated from cambodia on saturday to face trial uh the camp all the camps are being fixed fenced fenced uh some of them they have a very big fence and the companies are different types of companies they all have different operation jobs that they do here there so some of them they have a very big distance because it's coming they the very first two weeks they will just train you how to deceive people or how to scam people so they will just uh brand you like a lady that uses the computer that will create facebook profile for you okay and also maybe uh something like uh, google profile for you mm -hmm. you have your telegram you have your whatsapp mm -hmm. So you have this pro, uh, this profile for you, and they will give you pictures and videos of a lady. Okay. My brother, these people are very smart. So they will design you as a person who comes from that country. They will give you your pornographic movies, pictures, wow. everything that you do in life. So how long do you work every day? Uh, for the for the hours, the specified uh, hours is twenty uh, twelve hours per day, wow. but. If you don't achieve your target, you may work extra about oh. 16 hours a day. So this kind of work is like go to work, eat and sleep. Go to work, eat and sleep. So for that two weeks, so you, you work at night. Night. Yeah, my work was that uh, I work from midday 12 to uh, 12 a.m. every day. 12 p.m. It's shift. Yeah, 12 p.m. in the afternoon yeah. to 12 a.m. a.m. And it's a shift. Yeah. So the next day. Uh, you you'll be going on 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. Wow! So after the 12 p.m. you come to eat, then you go to sleep because there's pressure on the job, my brother. There's a pressure on the job. After coming back 12 a 12 p.m., come and eat, then you go back to sleep because you are going on a night nice shift. Wow! So the, so the night nice shift is from 12 p.m. Yeah. to 12 a.m. 12 a.m. Oh wow! And if wow. you don't achieve certain target, you may work to about 4 a.m. in the morning. They wouldn't do your business for you. Wow! Immediately you get there, they will take your passport. What people did you find there, or are in those camps? South Africans, South Africans, Nigerians, Nigerians, Ghanaians, Ethiopians, Cameroonians. Oh, I'll say most of the African country people. Wow! 
Most I even met some Bangladeshi people. They are there, Pakistanians, in, in, oh, Indians are more. Indians are more. Wow. Pakistanians, Indians, and some from this Asian country, that is the underdeveloped the Asian countries. Most of them are there because I was in the same room with a Pakistanian and other countries. Last month, Indians, they rescued about 1,000 people. Wow. But the first news was they, are, they were 750 Indians rescued from these coming jobs in Cambodia. Wow. wow. And later on, I saw about uh, 150 and later just like that and I've, I've been meeting them if you go to a place you can see that they, they have come them here and they are teaching them how to and you know indians they like indians because indians they are very good in yeah, IT. In IT, yes sure so they like indians scam and enslavement in cambodia is real sure but so meaning all the stories i've heard about cambodia about people getting lost about people being enslaved about people scamming they're all true they are all true so the next time you think of picking any job in Asia, especially Cambodia, be extra vigilant about it, especially if it has anything to do with online. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave your comment, share and like the video because that is what motivates me to do more of such intriguing stories.